And I'll just go ahead and kick this off before we get to questions. Welcome to Time Bolt Office Hours on April 13, 2023. You are live with Doug and Quinston. We are here to check your workflows, answer your questions, and generally just make sure you get the best out of Time Bolt. This is also a great time to talk about new product features and what's going on that's new at Time Bolt. It does look like before we you know start talking about updates, let me check with the audience, see if we have any specific questions to start off with. Okay, it looks like Loxie's at work. Are you just uh just kind of dropping in? Do you have any specific questions that you want to chat and we can discuss? Make sure review. Okay, they're just listening in. Um, as far as product, as far as product updates go, we have let me go ahead and share my screen. To get our latest product updates, there is a time bolt log. For product updates, if you want to see when the when Timebolt does automatic updates and want to see what exactly is being updated, you can go to our Timebolt release log, which can be found if you go to the pricing page and you hit this Timebolt release log. This gives you a link, and you can see uh, today we upload we updated a 5.0.16, which has some check uploads now a WAV file, which allows for better transcript detections and um detections, along with uh, made made it much more easier on the home page screen to drag and drop a file anywhere on the screen, and it'll load right in the time bolt versus having to go in through and, and hit uh, add through a button. Let's see, James just entered the waiting room. Let me just go ahead and check with James uh, when he jumps on. Or we can just knock out on these subjects. James, do you have anything specific that you would like to talk talk about today? Um, your workflows. I mean, to just put you on the spot here. We kind of it's nice to meet you. It uh, we just kind of we just got to review before we start just talking about product updates. We have to check with our audience and make sure that uh, we're hitting all the topics you talk about. Do you have uh, James? If you could introduce yourself and and uh, uh, let us know what type of content you make and and what question you may have. Sure, my name is James, and I do content for uh, government organizations, social media, um, live shows, podcasts, all kinds of things. I just started using the software and I'm trying to get more familiar with it. I use Premiere, was looking to check out the workflow back and forth a little bit there and get a little bit more familiar with the app and and, and navigating in there. I've been using a check a little bit too and having a little bit of success and some some things that are not working quite well with that. So a few different things. If um if, if you could well with Umcheck, can you tell us about your your sending unscripted video through and is it when you're saying you're having a little bit of success, can you tell us what's not successful, what hasn't been successful and what you have liked? Uh, you, uh, you know, one of the videos, eight minute video uh, unscripted, it, it missed a lot of the, it's got a lot of other things. I'm not quite sure how to hone that in maybe. Okay. And and I'll let Quinston go ahead and talk about what we have found. We we had actually had a, a another file type sent to us. We'd been mostly running through Zooms, which had the, the files record on Zoom, which have been 85% accurate. I'd say it gets about 85% of the ums and ahs. But then we saw this other file that looked like it had decent audio. Uh, we're talking more around 50%. So we were looking to optimize the ability for our transcription service to catch the ums. Now, Quinston, could you go ahead and talk about that? Initially, what we were doing was we had the video and we were ripping the MP3 from that video and like, making it smaller so that we can upload it to the cloud faster. But what we found was that uh, the MP3 itself uh, that was being generated didn't, it sounded the same, but for some reason that the audio service, which we are using, uh, it wasn't detecting the ums exactly the way we found in the original file. The, we just launched an update today, I think it was a few hour, hour, hours ago, where instead of the MP3, we convert the, the video into a WAV file. And if a, a wave is essentially lossless, it doesn't lose any audio quality when you translate from video to the audio file. We are uploading the WAV file instead of MP3 now. And what, what we saw was that uh, the WAV file gives equivalent amount of detections as the original video file. I'm sure that if you run the same file now uh, with the new update, you will get probably an increased 50% more increase over your existing whatever percentage of detections you had. But when we saw the file that wasn't giving good audio, it, it detected about 85% of the ums and us. I think the new update would, would work much better than the previous one. Well, that's great news. Uh, I was really curious. The, the file, I, maybe, I sent you one of the files and maybe that was the one you were looking at too, but I just it was just an export from you know, Premiere. Is is how the I think the file that you, that oh, you was was that of a person of a man sitting in front of a camera? Yes. Yeah, that's the file. We tested. Yeah, yeah, you're the guy. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, yeah, that's the file we tested. Yeah. Wonderful. Doug sent over that file to me, and I didn't know from which customer it was, but uh, that's the file we ran the test. File. I was kind of mortified. I was like, holy crap! <laughs> wow, it was, it's the perfect <laughs> test. It's the perfect test file. I'm just used to seeing with the Zoom recordings. It just picked it up a whole lot different than than what it did with yours. And let me ask you, what I did notice is that it seemed like all the dead air, the majority of the dead air and dead spaces were was already cut out of that file. It was that a, you, you said that you edited that in Premiere first and then. So actually, actually, no, actually this was, this was, I'm just, it was another organization that I'm working with and I was trying to, I was trying to strictly 
take their video and show them what your services could do. Because I was trying to get them to. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. I see. I see. So there's a. It was full of ums and, and things like that. There was some dead air in there. There wasn't a lot that it detected, but there was there was a little. And Chris, uh, Quinston, do you think dead air? Do, do you think the natural state of the video? That's the one thing we also haven't been able to test for. With zooms, it's a natural kind of state with uh, finding the ums and ahs. There's dead air. There's pauses. But with his with his particular file, it was already all cut out, right? So it was literally just using unchecked. I'm wondering if that has anything to do with uh, so. being able to. So. I, I can actually show the same file. I have it on my desktop. If if you don't mind, if it... is, is is that all right with you, James? Uh, yeah. Let me go ahead and enable. There you go. Make sure you share sound. So this is the file. It was pretty much all the audio is uh, pretty much cut out. So it's a fully edited video. So I did uh, change the settings a little bit to make sure that I do get some silences. But there's a lot of them. Lots of ums. And I had one yeah. question here. The, clicking off the red ones, it has identified those as theirs. I want to add them back. Sometimes it, it took it identified words that I want to keep. How do you how do you Convert here. those so red back. There is a list over here, right? So you can just no, no, manually. You just have one word. Oh, some, okay. some so's, maybe some so's or ands or whatever. I don't. I, I, I we, don't we, want. we don't have that functionality right now. Uh, uh, but eventually, it's it's gonna come. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a, a way in which you can select an entire sentence. So we can just drag and drag and select an entire sentence, yeah. and then you can do a shift shift click. So we're gonna have something called a shift click where. Correct. If something is in red, you can hold down shift and then click on it and it will deselect okay, that great. particular so that, that, that function. I had, I had a lot where this person is using uh, words inappropriately or as fillers, and then sometimes where they really are necessary to connect the sentence. Understood. And just yeah. taking all of them out. Right, correct. What he's asking, that, that what he's asking Quinston, uh, what, I, what I think he's asking is so instead of being able to select entire sentences, the word like. For example, it could be some like filler word, like, you know what I'm saying? But it could actually be, you know, it's red like the color, you know, yeah. like, a, like a rose. And so what he's asking is, is that inside that sentence where it says like a rose, if he could unselect just that one, see how uh is in red right now? Something is in red, you could unselect it without unselecting every uh. Correct, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So yeah. I think uh, there are two, three uh, features that I that we do want to add to this. One is the the one that is to add an exception, essentially. It, it, it would be called to add an exception. So you can, you have your words laid out in front of you and you can hover over it, shift, and then click on top of it so that it just removes that selection. So that's one thing that I'm thinking about. Uh, second thing is, uh, if you want to just take out entire paragraphs, entire sections of the file, then you can drag, select, then take out the entire sections instead of having to just be able to click them. So those are two or three features. You will prob you will see them in the next, uh, I think, two or three weeks. It's, it, it's in, in production right now. We're working on it. The file that you sent me, right, uh, that you sent in the customer support, this is the same file. As, as you can see, we're detecting way more us on the same files. So there were 13 us and two ums found. It did miss some of them. I know that there's an um at the start of this. There's one um over here, mm -hmm. which it did miss. And he, but... does, he does a he does this a very particular long um that uh, also didn't catch. It's, it's very it's the extended up. We'll try to improve this as much as possible. So right now, I think we did it for the quality. Maybe mm -hmm. that there could be something based on the language or the accent that we could do. Probably the, the other curiosity, importing this into Premiere, when I uh, exported the XML and, and brought it in, it gave me all the cuts at the point where it detected us. But uh, it didn't take them out also. Do you have any? Is that because I didn't? didn't uh... Yes. You need to. Did you click this button which says split timeline and turn off words? I didn't yeah, see. I click I this that. button. No, I don't. I didn't see you did that. This, you, I don't think you hit that button, and you just clicked off that screen yeah, without hitting the button. This button. Yeah, so this button turns off those words. Okay, and then from there, now that they're now when you click that button, you go into the editor. If you just exported the XML now, it, it would. It would. Correct. Correct. It would, so as, as you can see, it's an um, right? This is. Um, yep. Um, uh, you can see yeah. that this is in red. It's in red right now. It's not in green, mm -hmm. which means that when you export the XML, this part is not going to show up in it. Okay, because because when I brought it in, the cuts were there, but the, but it didn't. But they were not minus the ums. Correct. Can, can you go yeah. ahead and so this can you go ahead and export this, Quinston, if if you could, just for the purposes of this. Why don't you why don't you say this is a JSON and export this for our plugin on in, in Adobe? Uh, I don't have. Uh, Premiere Pro on this machine. Okay. I could show it in DaVinci. 
Okay, perfect. That's it's it's, a, it's the same type. It's the same type of process. Do you have the extension set up for Adobe, James? For Adobe, yeah, but I don't use DaVinci. Okay, that's fine. It's the same process. It okay. really is. Premiere, you're going to drop your file in into your media pool. You're going to highlight it. It wouldn't premiere. Import the time. Importing the timeline from the XML. Wait, why? Well, just a second. Why are we importing the timeline for XML? We're using the plug at the extension, correct? Oh, you want to use the extension? We can do that. Use the extension to it. Yeah. Yeah. Are we using Are we using the script on a workspace now? Do you have to apply the JSON? And the XML? No. No, that's a different thing. So the XML is separate and the JSON is separate. Okay. They're two separate things. If you want to use XML, you can use XML. If you want to use JSON, there's a Premiere Pro plugin with which you can use the JSON. If you just want to use XML, you can use XML by, by, by itself. Yeah, I don't, don't, have no, I don't have a preference. I guess I just don't know what's the best. Well, flow. This, so this, is the, this is what we would recommend, okay, is blanket recommendation for okay. Resolve, for Adobe Premiere. And soon for working on Final Cut, use the extension. With the Adobe Premiere, with the, with the Adobe extension, it allows you to do multicam if you ever end up doing something like that, right, once you have it set up. But it also exports all of our, all of, it exports speed up silences, punch in and punch out. There's nothing that you can't do inside Timebull that's not going to export through our, through that JSON, through the Adobe integration. There's no reason to ever use XML again inside of Adobe. And uh, that's okay. the exact same reason that we are recommending that you do not use XML inside uh, DaVinci Resolve. The only thing we can't do right now, and the only caveat is we can't export speed ramps, uh, the fast forward silences through our, our plugin yet. We're working, we're, we're looking at possibly doing color coding to where you can apply a blanket effect to the entire timeline and, and using speed ramps that way. But that would be the only reason you would use XML now in, inside DaVinci Resolve. So tell yeah, me one so, more time, how do you use the J, how do you apply the JSON to just verbally tell, say that again then? I have to install Premiere Pro. One second, give me, give me 20 minutes. Oh, give me, I need to install. I, do, I don't have Premiere on this machine. That's the thing. I have to. In, in the meantime, can I ask a question? Yes. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Hi, uh, I actually posted this question in the forum and tried to uh, send an email. I never received any response, which was uh, shocking. Uh, somehow I got this notification. I'm glad. But it took me 12, 14 hours of watching different videos. And finally, one YouTuber came up with a creative solution to help me out. And uh, I, I was going nuts. And I, I loved how this uh, cut out everything. It was super exciting. But then I wasn't able to put it to use. Now, the problem that I had was I am using Red Footage or 3D file. Or 3D file in the Premiere Pro, I am not able to use extension. Or I'm not able to drag that file directly on the standalone app. So when I drag the standalone app, it's not even detecting, right? Because you guys allow only the M MOV or MP4. I tried exporting just the audio file and tried to extract it, and that did not work either. But it was super frustrating, and uh, uh, finally, how I solved it, but I don't know if there is a future support coming, but uh, the YouTuber told me how to solve it, but th this is how I solved it. I exported a, a, just a low-resolution file. As soon as I complete the shoot, the full 20 minutes video, I exported as 120 uh, by whatever the dimension, exported as a video plus audio file, and then I import that file in the uh, uh, Time Bolt app, and I uh, do the cut, do the process, then export the XML, then I import that XML into the Premiere Pro, then I uh, select the cutout, uh, all the label as the same select group, and then I copy that selected group and apply on a separate layer on top of my 20 minutes video, and then hold Alt and then bring that down, and then select the group again, and then deleting Alt Delete. This was the only, this was the lifesaver for me, but then it is still a very time consuming process. Is that any which, other? Which file type is this? R3D. Uh, I'm shooting with the Red Scholar W. Uh, I've, okay, I, yeah, I've, never, I've never even heard of that type of file. In, in, in a Sample a Red Camera R3D. Uh, red is the uh, digital camera. camera. The, the, the raw file that Red shoot is the format called R3D. And okay. that's a, a log file which gives you insane amount of uh, color grading opportunity. And it's a 5K. I, I don't think you'll be able to use that in time I, because I don't think it'll be supported. I think the, the way you did it is the best way to do it, converting it into an audio. Uh, mm -hmm. Why did that not work? Why, no, why, audio why did, did not audio, work. I, okay, I don't why, know. What kind of file did you get after you converted to audio? An MP3 oh, I, or a WAV file, right? I tried both, yeah. MP3. An MP3 file didn't work? No, it did not work. It did not cu cut anything. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, actually, if you go to Time Bolt community, I actually posted this question and I also sent a support email. I Here. even sent a couple of followers. Hold on, let me, let, me, let me check. Hold on, just a second. Are you this dude? You can search for Hari. H-A-R-I. That's mine. Yes, that's me. Are, are you real? Okay. I wanted to bring no, this. No, no, no. I'm not. 
I'm not Rio. I'm Hari. H A R I. It's Where? it's. I posted it. I never. I don't think I received a response. Can you search for Hari? Or... It's not in the feed. It was. I don't know where I posted it. Honestly. Well, that's the only place it's going to show up. I, I, I don't know. Uh, can, can you search R three D dot R three D maybe? R three D. I'm not. I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't think R three D files would be supported. Uh, no, I they, they seem, The audio thing should have worked. I don't know why. Uh, when you converted it, you just got a, an MP three file, right? An MP three file. So if you have an MP three file or something, let me just share my screen. If you have an MP three file, so if you have Time Vault, and I just take an MP three file, this is a, sorry, a WAV file. Let's say dot, dot WAV. It's also an audio. It shows up just like any any of the file would. The, the the file that you use was that your primary audio file? Was that the camera where you recorded the audio? I, I directly uh, use XLR directly to, to the um, okay. video and audio. I cut out the video and then I just exported the uh, whole file into just the MP3 file. What, 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 what did you see after that? Did you see anything? Did you see the waveform uh, showing I, up or did you see nothing? I, I honestly don't even recall because it's been a, a month uh, I have been shooting. But but uh, I, I honestly after this flow worked out, I didn't even upgrade the software because I'm afraid to lose my work. But it's super exciting. Uh, yeah, life I mean, I, okay. What I would the thing is, you you might not be the only person who might have this issue. I would like to jump on a call with you afterwards. So can you send me your e email? I, I have have you sent me an email or have you sent Doug an email? I, I, if you if you go in your support, if you search uh, Hari Haran S W N, it should. Okay. I even can sent a follow. Right, chat. I'm having a hard time understanding. Uh, can you put? Can you type that out in the chat? I know it, how to look yes. at this. We'll check. We'll check our Zenda support and then uh, get you on a call with Quinston afterwards. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not in front of the computer. I, I'm at a basketball practice. Okay, we'll do it I'll, later. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely reach out though. But I'm I'm trying to uh, transition to DaVinci from Premiere Pro. I haven't even figured out. Would Would I be able to still do the same thing that I did before? Would I be able yes. to, the, the same XML I can use it? Okay. Yeah. You would, but I would recommend a better, a better, a better a flow, which is, let me just show you again. No, no, I'm sorry, so, uh, someone else was asking you a question and I hope I didn't interfere. That's okay, we'll get to that. I, I downloaded Premiere Pro and I'll, I'll show the Premiere Pro. What we'll do right now is we'll show the DaVinci flow and the Premiere Pro simultaneously. Okay. This is Premiere uh, DaVinci Resolve. First of all, what we do is we open Time Vault. Can you see my screen? You can see my screen, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing this. Okay. In your case, right, I'm, I'm just going to run through a video, for example. So if you take a video, right, this is the video, run it through Time Vault. What I do next is I download download the the timeline cut so these this this file will contain the information about the cuts it's in it's in a dot json format so i downloaded the cuts i click this button which is the save button and it gave me this file yeah. now if i click on it it will open the Finder. file explorer and then it will show me where the file is now what i do is i take that that video file okay and i import it into DaVinci Resolve. I drag the file onto the timeline, right? It's a pretty... Now what I'm going to use is I'm going to use my DaVinci Resolve extension for Time Bolt. We have a special DaVinci Resolve extension for Time Bolt. Time Bolt, DaVinci Resolve integration. So we have an integration for Time Bolt. Uh, uh, hold on right there. I paid for a lifetime license. So do I have to pay for this separately? or? No, 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 no. This is this comes with the whole... Okay. There's, only, there's only one subscription for Time Bolt. You just have to okay. download this yeah. file. Okay. It's, just a, it's just a normal file which you download. So there's instructions on the website of how to download it and install okay. it. But for the purpose purposes of this, I'm just going to run the, you know, the the integration, right? Now what I do is I have my timeline open. I know where my cuts are. I have the JSON file. Mm -hmm. Click on it. I, I go to my JSON file, which is uh, somewhere on my desktop. So I have my JSON file here. This is the one I downloaded from Time Bolt. I open it. And as you can see, the cutting has started. So this extension takes that takes the information, the cuts information from the yeah. JSON and just applies it to the timeline. Yeah. So and then the, you don't uh, even need to use XML. Correct. Uh, sorry, what's your name? Uh, my name is Quinston. Uh, my only problem is the R3D file is massive. For a 10 okay. minutes video, I'm working with a 40 GB of file. Yeah. And for me to export it as a dot .mp4, even... No, no, like, don't, don't use, yeah. You don't have to use an mp4. This can be done on a wave, wave file too. So correct, correct. Give, no, I'm, I'm just... Uh, I, I wish there is a, I'm okay. going to try the MP3 wave file. This, that seems to okay. be the only option. Let me show you. Let, let me show you what I, okay. Now this is the file, right? This is yeah. video.mp4. The same, the same file. I convert it into an audio form format, put this into DaVinci Resolve and I export it an MP3 file. Okay. Yeah. Now this, this file is, is the same length as this file. It has the same audio as this file. So in time board, instead of using the audio, the video, I'm going to use the audio. So this just has the audio. So the audio shows up. Now, I don't know why your audio wasn't showing, but for the purposes of this example, the audio shows up, right? The audio is being detected. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the video on this audio. Now, instead of video, it's just sort of the audio JSON file. Okay. Now, because they both are the same length and they are the exact same file, the cuts on the video are going to be exactly the same as the cuts on the audio, right? Now yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, the, I'm not going to import the, the audio file because that was there 
only for the purposes of finding the cut. Correct. You're going to use the JSON. Yeah. Exactly. Here, when I import, when I use my timeline, when I change my timeline, instead of loading the, the audio, I loaded the video, but I'm going to use the audio JSON. They give the same cuts. Why? Because the information yeah. is the same. But, I'm not yeah. telling you convert the R3D file to MP4. I'm just saying rip yeah. the audio. I'm, I'm going to try it. I don't know why uh, I, I don't remember, or maybe I tried that option and I couldn't figure out the label selection. But that was the first attempt that I tried uh, since it did not support the R3D. Yeah. But if anybody, I, if any, anybody wants to know where to find the DaVinci Resolve extension, it's on our this page, timeboard.io slash features. On, on that page, we have a section called uh, DaVinci Resolve integration where you can download the integration and you, you use it. There's also a video about uh, how to download the, how to use it essentially. Now, I just want you guys to know this is an amazing, amazing app and I'm so glad I found it. But I, it was also very disappointing that I did not get the support and uh, it looks like somehow there was a miscommunication and uh, I'm glad I got this notification. Yeah, it's very unlikely. If you, It's very unlikely for any of us to miss it. So I'm not sure how yeah. we missed it, but yeah, no, I'm very I'm unfortunate, not. honestly. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the help. But check out so, R3D and if there is any other, I don't know if it's still a... The, uh, the, on, the only reason I don't think R3D would be supported in time is because it's just too like, intensive. Of, 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 because I saw the, the encoding and it's it seems very heavy on, on, on the software. I don't think time will... will is, the, the encoder used in time is not as sophisticated as the ones used in DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. The best way I, I, I would suggest is dealing with the audio. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, R3D is more yeah. proprietary Hollywood standard. It's, 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 it's very intensive. But now I'll show the same process in Premiere Pro that it's it's not the same thing that we did on Premiere Pro in, in DaVinci Resolve we can do also on Pre Premiere Pro we'll take the same video file I'll drop it in the timeline I have the, the extension installed but as we have the extension for DaVinci Resolve we have the extension for Timebolt uh, for Pre Premiere Pro also the same thing I have the JSON file I know I have the J J JSON file I'm just going to go find where the JSON file is it's on my desktop somewhere I find the, the audio.wave.json and I apply it and the cuts are ready so it's the same process and with this you can even do with now the reason you should you, you should use the the extension over xml is as doug said it allows you more flexibility you can do multi-cam files with it so let's say you have audio recorded on a separate uh, microphone and you have video recorded with a dslr uh, camera or whatever if you have separate files multiple files the json allows you to essentially unify all the cuts across those files. And that's, and if you need the tutorials, so we have entire blog posts also about that, how to use it in, in the resources section, there's, there's a, right, an entire three minute video on this. And also in the resource section, we have uh, the blog post, which goes over how to install the software. And again, there are videos installation where you can download it and uh, all the use, use cases. So if you have single track audio, if you have single track of video, with single track audio, also if you have single track video with multi-track or, or, or audio and, and different variations, if you have multi-cam, like what to do if you have multi-cam. So all these variations are there in the blog post. If you have incredibly complex setups, most people are not going to have very complex setups. Most people are going to have maybe a single file or maybe one or two files. So that's much easier to set up. But if you have more complex setups, you can also work with those. And yeah, James, I, I, are you still on? Yeah. Did you uh, catch what I just said? The only, the only reason you would use XML would be if you have a single file, right? You wouldn't need to use um, the extension, although I still recommend using the extension if you have a single file. But if you have multiple files, let's say you have a camera, which is recording, and then you have a microphone, which is recording audio, then I would recommend using the XML, the, the extension, because you can use the same cuts across multiple files. Say that again? You can use the same cut information across multiple files. If I give you an example, I don't know if I have multiple files right now, but for example, right, this is my, let's say I have uh, two files, right? I have this file, which is my video file, and then I have an audio file, right? I have an audio file. Now, in this example, they both have the same content, but yes. let's say they did not, right? I can select this file, apply the JSON cuts on this, uh -huh. and I can select this file and apply the same JSON cuts on this. Because it's already set. That, because it's already set, right? Which means you can apply the same information, the same cuts on a, a multitude of files and have them all sync together. So if you have a very complex project, you can still have the synchronization and the same cuts across all of them. The time, the reason Timebolt exists the way it does is that um, I'll give you one more example. So how does someone who live streams on Twitch use Timebolt? So someone who live streams on Twitch usually has multiple audio tracks, right? They have an audio track for the game audio, which is the games they play. And then they have the audio, which they have about themselves speaking through the microphone. The way Twitch records it is that it gets stored on multiple tracks. Like this, for example, track A will have the music or and the game audio and track the second track will have your voice. What Timebolt does is Timebolt essentially takes that file and you can have a detection over multiple tracks or you can just detect over a single track. And then that information can be brought into Premiere Pro and then apply the same inputs can be applied across the same file or you can even have a separate file. So let's say a Twitch streamer has a third camera which they have uh, placed 
in some corner, right? And you can bring in that file and then drop it into Timebolt and also have that file be synced across the cuts. So if I have a multicam, which I, I use, I do frequently, I have a multicam sequence in Premiere. Can I just take one of those files into Timebolt and, and then do the same, and do the same thing and, and apply it to all my... My yeah, yeah, you can, you can. You can apply it in one file, you can apply it in two files, three files, as many files as you want. I already have the edit done, and then I'm just trying to take out those. What yeah. you're, what, I think what the key I think what the key is, is that whatever file to edit with video in Timebolt, because James, you asked about how do you actually use the timeline more effectively. Right now, we're just showing, hey, look, you drop it in the Timebolt and you export it out. Well, in reality, there's a whole middle part there. You just, that's the first thing you want to know is how do I get my video in? How do I get my video out? How do I make it work with my existing workflow, right? And once that is defined, the beauty of Timebolt is not just in cutting the dead air, ums and ahs, it's how fast you can cut out the content. And so that's, that's now what you can back into um, how do you use Timebolt. And so for that, I would use video as much as possible. Even if you have a master audio file that's a master WAV audio only file, the key is, is when you start the different multi-tracks, right? And so our recommendation is whatever you're editing with in Timebolt, that be your longest file. If, whether that's your master, your master audio and your video are all on the, captured on the same way, or you have a master video and it's just using the mic audio, that would be, if, if you wanted to edit with video, that would be your longest master. That, that's what you would want to hit record on first, okay? Because then when you drop that into Premiere and you have your, other, your master audio, and then let's say you have a third camera angle that's kind of sparse, you're able to sync that up, use the sync function inside Adobe Premiere first, okay, yep. before you apply those JSONs. Right, you use the sync function, pull it over to zero zero on the timeline. Okay, you want to give it some room inside Premiere before you hit sync, otherwise it'll get jumbled up. And uh, and then that's when you want to have used all the edits that you've done. There's no reason to do any more cut work outside of Timebolt. It's it's faster. It's it's truly faster. Even the guys with 20 years of 10 years editing in Premiere, once they know the quick keys that I'm about to show you, that's uh, that, that's. Yeah, I, I, I'm having a little bit of challenge navigating through the timeline using it as an editor with zooming in and out that I'm familiar with on a timeline so I can see more of the all of it. Is that possible? How do you do that? I'm sorry. Can you ask that question one more time? I, I, the, in, inside of Time Vault, when I'm navigating back and forth through the Time Vault, as an example, two things that I, you can't go backwards as fast as you can go forwards. And I, I'm not, I don't see where you can zoom the timeline. How do you move? How do you move back and forth, go through the edit a little bit more smoothly? Maybe I'm missing something. I, you, there, there is no zoom option on the timeline. Here is. Or, or how, can you start? How do you, how do you start back at the so, beginning? So, there, uh, I would do what I would do if I were you. What I would do if I were you, James, is the first thing that you do. And, and Michelle, uh, before I go into this, uh, is this content relevant to you? I, I know you've been. Um, on the call for a while. Is, is there anything specific that you'd like me to hit on? Actually, what he's asking right now was one of the things that I was wondering about is more of the Zoom for sometimes when the audio is really quiet. It's hard when I'm trying to cut out some of those words without using the M-check to be able to see exactly where I should be putting my cut line. Yes, you're right. That's another piece. When you drop your file in, you need to be able to make sure that you can you can see it. What I, your first one that you do is probably not going to be the most optimal version that you can use inside Timebolt because most of us aren't checking our audio levels to because we're going to be editing based on audio. Know that you can get you can improve very quickly your next go around, right? Your 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 next editing go around. Just audio is going to be very important. In between those steps, okay, to get the one that you have that you need done. See, this is this is my audio. I know when I record it, this it's going to show up perfectly in Timebolt. I'm not going to have to add any enhancements. I can listen to it raw. But here, if let's say I was doing something on my iPhone and I didn't know all this yet, I would just be able to do a volume increase. You'd have to I have to hit restart app. Okay, and what'll happen is it'll take that sound waveform and expand it, okay, so that these sound levels become more defined at the most basic level. Quincy could explain the technology behind it, but it, it just makes it to where it's more defined, you can see it, and it's much easier to cut for uh, before you actually record for this. The only thing that you're going to watch out for is that it, the when you listen to it in preview, it's going to sound a lot more hollow. It's going there's going to be an off sound to them to it. No, that is just for preview purposes only. When you render or export, it doesn't impact the final render, and it's just for preview. That's why it, it may sound a little distorted. That's why I don't like to use it. Just it's it's kind of more of how do I fix bad audio versus going forward. Yes, those are your your options. Go to settings. Okay, click these three. Click these three, boom, boom, boom. Click restart app, throw your file back into Timebolt, and now go ahead and begin using it that way. Once you get decent audio, you do not want to have these things on, okay? You're going to go back into settings, turn these off, and restart the app, and and you'll that way you can you don't hear distorted audio, and it's not super 
punctuated for you. Okay. So now with the first thing, the first thing I do is the first immediate thing, because it's so easy to forget, just put this on 1.5x, right? And so what this does is anytime you hit the space bar <clears throat> in theater, and in the it automatically defaults space bar. It automatically defaults to 1.5x. You don't have to hit the L key because you can, once I, once I get going to speed up going forward in the movies, you break the fourth wall in moments of great impact. It's a material one that's active moments. You break the wall in the moments of I, I, I can just hit the L key and it'll just keep uh, speeding up going forward, okay? But it's typical. So you can see that, that was just, a, instead of going here and turning this off right here, use the O key and what happens is you click and it turns that scene off, skips the next part of silence and skips to the next scene. You don't have to watch even your other stuff, which you would do. In the movie, movies, you break the fourth wall in moments of great impact. It's that amount. That's, you can see, that's how you're able to go from through. audience. You break it when I can, you want to be I can, YouTube, uh, you uh, right and that's that's very simple to do which allows you to um, uh, quickly remove sections and then if you were if you were looking at this was a scripted video okay it's it's a little bit different this is scripted so if I wanted to just cut this word out right here I'm not gonna you can go right here and hit okay let me find the shit, I don't even know where uh, split create split and then I could go right here and hit create split and then I could go up here and do that okay or I just click s for split s for split it would turn off right just use your there's I call it slop okay sl it's a lack of a better acronym I don't if somebody has a better one because now we got m2 but slop split the timeline l just speeds up the uh speeds it up o turns th scenes on or off you just got to get in there and just press o right you, you'll you'll see that this is actually highly responsive and then p okay as you're going through it you can do punch that p punches in a certain a certain value so right here if i punched in at 125 the default value i'm already out of frame what i would do up here for punch i'd put this these are three punch values and settings i'd put this maybe at 115 maybe this at 120 and then have something extreme 175 or something and now when i'm going through Terry. Algorithms auto detect all right. You can you can center it up. Now you have Alt or Option plus your arrow keys, so you can move around. See how I'm going up. I I could if I if I wanted to go if you if you wanted to you could right click right and then click over here and then click go. But that just takes forever. There's no point in doing that. Just use your you use the P key to cycle zoom areas. And then once you're zoomed in, use your Alt and Option and the arrow keys, and you can move around. But you're not going to, it depends on if it's a scripted or unscripted video, you're not going to want to punch in all over the place in, in most of these. But uh, this gives you the opportunity on the very first pass. The goal is you don't have to go back and watch a video, right? That's what you don't want to have to do is keep going back and watching for some new layer uh, when it comes to cutting or keeping or accentuating what you have. And SLOP, and then we also have markers, okay, which allow you to either save into shorts. You click M, you can save that into shorts. Um, and we're working on a way to separate this out. This is why, Quinston, as far as videos go, I, I, I want to figure out how do we separate out chapter markers from markers. Uh, make make some videos on that. This right here, you can, it, let's say it's an unscripted video or you want to make chapter markers for YouTube. This is, this is scene one, right? And I'll go down here and put a marker. This is scene two, right? And then all the way down here let's say it's start of scene three right clicks go in and download a markers text file if this is a 40 minute video this is going to save you in easily the amount of time that it is long because your minute 350 cut in this and in, in time bolt is not going to be 350 in the video it's probably gonna be a minute 25 or a minute minute and three seconds or something because of all the cuts now what i have this is the beautiful thing i can take this is what i use these for i hit download markers text file and now i've got a copy paste formatted for YouTube that you just copy and paste this into the description of YouTube and you have complete chapter markers entirely uh, categorized content that, that that also prevents now after you get your video all cut up to now going in and trying to find the microseconds because now it's not you don't have five seconds of dead air 30 seconds of dead air between topics it's boom 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 now you would be I'd be going in there and I'd it, it have to find microseconds and then writing all that down this was just a godsend Right, just just uh, creating this. I, I hope you guys get the same use out of it I do for our office hours. And at that point, at that point, you, you've you've utilized a punch in, punch out. There's going to be times where it's going to make sense to speed scenes up. Okay, when your goal is to show, not tell, you might the process of what buttons you click may be important because all of us create all different types of content. In the end, we're gonna. You might make. 
unscripted video and scripted video, but sometimes you just want to show not tell, this is all you do. You hit fast forward silences and you can either mute or unmute it. You can add your speed ramp right here. I usually put it 4X. Sometimes I'll even talk and give it some layer. I'll put 2X and then mute. I don't sound like chipmunk, okay? But it just, you can tell it's warning, ethical effects of seeing the smarter, faster you and video will occur, right? You can do that kind of stuff or just hit mute and show what's going on, on the screen. And so what happens is when I click this, okay, I don't have anything automated right now. I can just go in and this is the only time I would click the bar. See how I turn it to orange? Okay. You go up here, you turn this bar to orange. And anytime you turn that bar to orange, it's going to be sped up by the amount that you've shown. The only thing you can't see is it's not going to speed up in preview. That's what makes it a little bit confusing is that you're not seeing the effect applied right there. But this will export, especially for using Premiere and, and Quincy's working on the, the uh, result integration as well. We're just trying to figure out how to make how to make our speed up silences export. And then if you did a if you're a visual, if you're doing a video tutorial where you're gonna learn when you talk, video's on, when you don't, it's off. You could be giving a tutorial and in between you're showing the workflow with the with with your mouse. You could easily just say any silence that's less than two seconds, speed up by 4x, okay, which would be you moving around with the mouse. And now that automates that aspect so you're not going through and by hand doing those little cuts. After you get all that done, you're, there's no reason not to entirely cut up your timeline and time bolt. That's when you export. What we don't have though is the ability to have a scroll bar up here and then zoom around on different parts of, of the screen. Hopefully with the tools that we provided, this is more instead of needing to zoom around a whole bunch, it's more about how do I just keep going and going and going and going and getting it chopped up as I go, chopped up and categorized as you go. Yeah, I think the zooming that I was thinking of is the visual of the actual audio in GarageBand when you can slide it to make it kind of extend it out. But if I'm making a cut, sometimes when those ums or likes kind of spread, but there is a piece there that I want to keep. Sometimes it's hard to find the exact spot where I'm making the split. Well, one thing you can do is use the arrow key. So if you use the arrow keys, it moves the, the cursor one frame left or right. So you can okay. use the, so instead of using the mouse to pinpoint, you can use the arrow keys to move back and forth. Okay. So see, Doug is doing it right now. So you can use the arrow keys left or right, move one frame so that you can find that perfect place where you want to make a split. Okay. Up and down arrow keys allow you to just... Up, up and down makes you go to the next cut, and then left or right makes you go one frame ahead. Perfect. And hopefully hopefully with with what we talked about, how to adjust the audio, the need to... You're, it's going to be much easier to delineate when words start and end versus being able to kind of zoom in and, and see, get down into the microseconds of, of each of the waveforms. James, does that, does that answer your question? Do you, are you still going to subscribe next month? <laughs> no, no, yeah, this is fantastic. I, this is, I'm getting more and more excited about it there too. The, what wasn't intuitive to me now, and now I figured out is if you, if you, you can go, you can't grab the timeline and move it. Right. And the, and the arrow keys go frame by frame, but if you, you can use your trackpad to, the quickly scroll right. when you do two back there that wasn't in, but that was ah, now i that's really interesting you say that quinson it is amazing to me how many when people that just don't interact and it, and it may not be that they're not interacting with it it may be that their first motion is holding this to go this oh, yeah. left and right and it doesn't do it so it's okay well this is just a static this is just a yeah. static you can oh, I can only do this. How then it's there's no way I'm gonna. I mean, we could if that's a necessary motion, we can add it the drag and it's because if you could drag it, that would that would that would do in my brain that you could swipe with the other multi. Makes sense. Like that too, but I, it just, I, I, we mind, will add that. It locked that me. is that will be added in the next update. Yeah, that's interesting because because even this I just noticed if I the thing starts over here. See how that playhead? If I hold down right here it's not the playhead skips right here to where i can see and then i can pull it i understand yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting no i'm I, I we've been at this for so long i've never even thought of that aspect yeah, i mean it, it, we get tunnel vision very often <laughs> uh, one more quick suggestion with the with the um check it gives you a little transcription preview of the things that it's identifying but if you had a larger swath of the transcription you could identify words that are that are individual tick words that maybe didn't think of it because right now it's only giving you a section that includes ums or words that it thinks you should take out. There may be words that you want to take out that are individual, but you can't see them in the transcription because it's only showing you a small, tiny thing. But you could identify what a, a word that's in there. Does that make sense? I, from the transcription, Doug. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking for something where I've done longer transcriptions. 
on the file, I just I, and like I, I, out wrap. I reran the file and it does work better with the update. That was great, guys. Um, but but I did notice there I, I, it's a small transcription that shows you in a preview. You can scroll up. You can scroll it. Uh, uh, one second. It's a scrollable section. Marker the video. Uh, this has been. I, I don't have. No, let, let me let me let me. I can I can just run them check right here. Let's just run it. This is only what about four minutes. Uh, this is only about three minutes long. But when when you're looking, I, you're able to scroll up and down. Uh, this is what I was wanting to show oh, okay. you the longer. You're able to scroll up and down. The one thing we're able to do really well is you're able to customize Umcheck for exactly how you talk. And that's what we want you to be able to do, right? Is is is, is this for example, you can you can scroll up and down. It's a scrollable section. See, even I have to pay for Umcheck. <laughs> <laughs> you can scroll up and down, for example. This, this the section is there, but you can it's scrollable section, so we can see all of the text if you scroll down. And and quite and, and what's nice is there most of those most of those filler words. Just make sure when you have your own unique word tick phrase, just separate it by a comma. This right here, you can no matter if this was an hour's worth of content. Got it. And that's why we did our, ex we, this is an exhaustive list of things. We went back and forth on this for like two weeks. We wanted you to have a right palette to start with because who knows, but uh, you can definitely see how it says, I, I put this in there, you know what I'm saying as an example of, you can phrase. say a long phrase. You just have to separate them out by commas. But to your point, what I, what I, what I also got from you that makes sense is I don't know how much about removing words right now with, with just selecting all of these things, right? But the ability to, since this is red already, right? If it's not red already and I hit skip, I think, oh, look, see, it, it outlines everything that says skipped. That works for me. But if it's now red, what I should be able to do, if I'm not going to delete it here, right? If I'm not going to, if I no, don't delete it here, I would want to be able to hit this skip is important. So I would just be able to turn this off without it impacting this one. You know what I'm saying? So that you could create exceptions within automated things. And I never thought that that's just kind of a, that's just might be a way to do it. No, we, we, we can do it. Yeah. I, I think that's a, a very uh, important feature to have. Okay. So and to it. is Loxley, it's, I'm sorry. Yeah, Loxley. It's, it's not been too long since we launched Umcheck. It's it's a very recent uh, update. We're still collecting a lot of feedback of how people are using it. So we can add more features to make it more usable and more worth having in the product. Absolutely. Have you, ever, have you thought about uh, adding an option for where it does remove silence or ums that it doesn't automatic yeah. uh, punch yeah, in? Yeah, yes. Yeah, punch in, so, aut automatic punch in. You're, you're asking, you're asking after, which I think is the right, which is the right process. You know, the first, the process is you drop your file in the time bolt, you get your silence detection settings right. Okay. So your base canvas, you, you're not going to change any settings. I want to look at silences that are 0.4 seconds in duration or 0.5, right? Get that part right. Then you run your own check that now you're, you have a clean palette, right? You, all your stuff is cut up, and uh, and and so now that's when you go in and you begin making your individual changes. That's when that is the correct process. There was something you had just you had just mentioned something, James. I was just wondering in that in that process, is, I wonder if it would be interesting to have a way for you to be able to automatically apply a punch in where it, where it's going to remove anything, and maybe this punch in is for a certain amount of seconds, right? It would automate that portion of covering up the the cut that punch the punch is a feature that right now is 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 manual you can adjust you can make manual adjustments to arrive on the right place what we haven't done yet what is is something that's in our, our product roadmap is automatic punches where you could create some type of little macro a punch in 118 percent then on your next cut come back to 100 percent and then your next one jump into 125 percent and and that would just be strictly for talking head videos you see in this example. It would be hard to do. You can't do something like that if you have multiple screen types and the punch variability is is way out of whack, right? Where it, it works really well if you have a face or it's just a live gameplay. Yeah. You just want to add. This has been awesome, guys. You have a, a subscriber and a disciple here. Uh, I got to run to another call, but thank you. Hey, thank you very much, James. I appreciate it. And do, is there any additional questions that we can help with today? Or looks we're good to call it. Michelle, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I feel energetic around you. That name, yeah. Energetic Embrace. <laughs> I need a good hug sometimes. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. And Loxley, thank you for uh, joining us. Through the recordings are on the YouTube channel. We'll be putting the recordings on our YouTube channel, and this one will definitely be going on there. Uh, I'll have something up in uh, in a couple of days. That's it for Time Bolt Office Hours on April 13, 2023, live with Doug and Quinston. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe, get the notification bell, because whenever we go live, it's clearly important. And we're out of time. Thank you very much.